JC Direct this week using AI to analyze the famous brand's results. Local inflation at three and a half year lows, but I don't know if that's going to help rate cuts and the US dollar is on a tear massively stronger. And welcome to JC Direct, episode 608 for 24 October, recorded just ahead of Market Open. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by Just One Lap. So let's uh, kick off with that local inflation that came out. And it was in a big number, right? 3.8%, uh, way better than expected. Uh, and, and, and remember... We've got a target range of three to six, but the governor talks about uh, the 4.5. So we are well below the 4.5. I mean, absolutely we are. We are back at uh, last time we were lower was uh, March 2021, three and a half years ago. We were at 3.2 percent. That, of course, was coming off the the pandemic uh, uh, challenges. And then, of course, inflation went crazy. We know all about that. We got a MPC in November. Do we get a fifty point a half percent rate cut? Uh, Johan Els from Old Mutual says yes, but I don't think it's so simple. Uh, Hugo Pino, and I'll put the tweet in the show notes. He makes a point, a uh, tidbit about the print. Uh, year on year for the third quarter was four point three percent. Saab had expected four point four. In other words, this number. The trend, the three-month number, is pretty much in line with what MPC was looking for. So I don't know that we get much more than a quarter percent in November. Uh, Certainly, we are hoping, like hope, for a full half percent. But we might not get the full number. We might just get another quarter. Look, we're going to get another rate cut in November. That's not the debate. The debate is how good is it. And I tell you... What is undoubtedly worrying Saab, and that is the RAND. And let's look at the dollar index first, DXY. And what we can see here, uh, that is not what I want. I want uh, that one. It's a much prettier picture. There we go. It has been rampant. It, it, so what we're talking, end of September, less than a month ago, it was trading at 100.42. It's not 104.33. That's almost a 4% move in uh, let's call it let's call it a month a four percent move in a month which is huge it's just been pretty much straight up money is flowing into the u.s and into the dollar like crazy we've seen their 10-year rates move a little bit higher that's certainly some of it we know what the other worries the world over is all about And, of course, we've got a U.S. election now, uh, what, some 12 days away, if they could just hurry up and vote. And it's going to be – so if if Kamala Harris Harris wins, we can expect, broadly, more of the same. If Donald Trump wins and he goes through with half of what he's talking about and forget his threats of violence and those – and I mean, don't forget they're real, but forget them in terms of impact on the economy – his tariffs and his his, – wanting to get rid of uh, illegal aliens, uh, or just foreigners seemingly, is going to be inflationary. The, the first problem is, okay, so you get rid of a whole lot of your citizens, typically your low-income workers, who's going to do that work? They're there because Americans aren't doing it, so they're going to have to pay up inflationary. Tariffs, you put a 5, 10, 50, 100% tariff on goods into the U.S. Uh, Trump says no worries, then companies will move their factories to the U.S., Maybe they will, but it's not going to happen the day after, which means a, a, temp- a 10% tariff on everything imported, uh, which is completely crazy. But just as an example, uh, that says quite simply uh, everything costs 10% more. So very much inflationary. And the, the, the dollar is just rampaging, which means that we have got a rand, uh, which is – just uh, going the other way, of course, we're getting uh, massive dollar uh, strength. We get rand weakness, and there we can see the rand bouncing up uh, 1773 as I record this. It looks like it could certainly get above 18 again, uh, and then we shall see. And then, yeah, I still think 1680 is on call. I still think 1550 is very possible. For now, that doesn't look much like it. Uh, but yeah, the rand moves, and the the trends are are. Are, are wild and vicious. We get that. But let's go look at Brent because we're also seeing a bit of an uptick in Brent. At the moment, petrol price increases for November is looking at maybe 15 or 20 cents. 
Brent has bounced, but it has certainly come back lower, uh, targeting 70 and breaking through there. But this is going to weigh on MPC. So again, I think if we go to that point, I think we're probably only going to get ourselves a quarter percent cut in November, which is not what we're looking for, but uh, sometimes we don't always get what we want, right? Uh, let's look at some uh, events we've got two coming up uh, Tuesday 11 o'clock how to list an actively managed uh, certificate on the JSC if you manage money in any shape or form uh, and you're interested come along we'll explain how the process works the ins and outs costs etc and then 21 November with Keith, McC Keith McClachlan we've had a massive run in SA Inc is there still value uh, how can we benefit from or, or profit from the two pot withdrawals which are gathering pace at a rapid speed uh, so we will chat around that he's also going to talk this new visa regulation how can we profit from that as well just one lap.com slash events for more information and booking So many moons ago, I was talking around using uh, the, the, the artificial intelligence, AI, to sort of work within investments and the like, and I was struggling to make it efficient. I've been using the Google Notebook LM. We can kind of do this with all of them. I'm going to show you an example of uh, using it on the famous brand results. So you want to create your own notebook. What's nice about this is that you are adding your own content. This isn't just sort of taking and saying, hey, go to the web and find me everything. I got here the PDF, which comes with their results, which they drop into the, the results uh, sense announcement every time. And then what I've also got here is another one, which is, again, a link. And this is just the sense announcement. Um, we could also get a little bit fancy and we could go and grab the famous book page from MoneyWeb. Let's see what, if anything, that adds to it. Um, I had tried contrasting. So I did a, a quick test of this uh, yesterday. I had tried contrasting it with the Spur result, but it wasn't pulling in data from Spur. It just was kept on saying, not enough information to analyze the balance sheet or the cash flow. Notwithstanding, it was all there. So there are my three documents. They've now all been encoded and they're in the system and it's happy. And immediately, and you can say, well, there's some questions that it says here. So uh, let's say, what are the financial performance uh, factors influencing its probability? It goes and thinks, takes a little bit of time. It's not too bad. But it, what I like about it is it's just querying those three links that I gave it. And, and you can add other things, as you saw. You can throw in YouTube videos. You can actually ask it to make you a, a podcast at the same time. There's a lot that we can do here. So it's looking, these are the six months ending August. Uh, it basically gives us some of the headlines, uh, capital expenditure, mostly on uh, leading brands, uh, expansion, technology, nothing that we couldn't have got from just looking at the headlines. Uh, consumer spending remains under pressure, we get that. Optimism, formation, and new government business sentiment remains mixed due to concerns about policy execution. We get that. Uh, retail revenue profitability decreased. Uh, lower sales volume of potato products attributed to increased competition and discounted imported frozen chips. They have their manufacturing facility and they sell products, including potato chips, and they're getting some uh, headwind there. Leading brands doing well. Uh, Signature struggled. Uh, Sadek, uh, strong Botswana and Zambia. Uh, so nice stuff. Load shedding uh, under control, leading to diesel cost savings and manufacturing. Electricity costs, however, have written. You can note it's all referenced, so we can go click through and actually see what they're talking about. Uh, they mentioned water shortages. Absolutely, this is a challenge. We saw attack who are going to basically spend a fair fortune at Mall of Africa creating a five-day water supply. Uh, investing in smart restaurant configurations, nothing there. Outlook, yeah, it doesn't tell us a whole lot. So I'm going to say uh, what we're operating margins in the different uh, segments. 
And I'm going to ask it that question. So what you can do here, and, and what we will have a look at is ask it around evaluation, but I don't know if, uh, what sort of answer I'm going to get from that. Earlier I'd had Spur in, and I was trying to contrast the two. It was just absolutely struggling with that part of the equation. Uh, operating margins, leading brands just over 50, nice improvement. Signature brands, operating margin of minus 6.7. Signature brands lost money. That wasn't apparent in the earlier point. Uh, down from a very, very slim profit. Manufacturing, a nice little uptick there. They spoke about savings on diesel. Uh, of course, they've got to pay ESCOM, but they're getting some efficiencies. Logistics uh, declined despite increased case volumes. I'm interested around that. Retail geographic, uh, South Africa's got a 9.8. Uh, SADC is down, but at a better margin. The UK, uh, true, it, it, a massive drop. Primarily uh, economic uncertainty, the election period, cost of living crisis, Middle East. Okay, so it's telling us some interesting uh, stuff in that regard. Uh, why did logistics margins drop? Why? What caused logistic uh, operating margins to drop markedly? No, it wasn't markedly, but nonetheless. What I like with this is that we could go through and read all of these documents, um, but this just makes it a little bit easier. So shift in product mix. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so it's a challenging economic environment, nothing there. Shift in product mix, uh, consumers lower value products, handled logistics division. Okay, that makes some sense. You buy in the lower value, there's just less margin there. Uh, input costs, uh, okay, although the savings from diesel – uh, increase in electricity about 12.7%. Uh, decline primarily compound effects of challenging economic da da da. Okay, that's all good. Um, uh, cash generation. Um, what was cash generation? Am I even slightly spelling it right? So ask around cash generation. So you can just start querying it and say to it, what about this? What about that? And it's nice to try and compare. As I said, it didn't work so lacquer. But uh, so now we've got a, a fairly good, so cash generation, uh, 498 million, a 7% decrease. Uh, revenue increased, operating uh, profit remained steady. Working capital management less efficient in the current period. That's an assumption that uh, Google LM or Notebook LM is making. Cash realization rate, operations as a percentage of EBITDA, decreased uh, to 106 from 114. Uh, the company ended the period with 324 cash cash equivalents, decreased from the previous. Uh, debt down 10%, uh, basically dropping the paying back some bother borrowings. Uh, company uh, anticipates economic recovery, which could impact positive, positively, uh, committed to managing reducing its debt in the medium term. This debt, of course, from Gourmet Burger Kitchen. Uh, so uh, what would be a fair valuation for the business? I don't know what answer I'm going to get here. I suspect I'm going to get a fudgy type of answer. I like it. I like that I can create my own. And what I can then do is save this notebook uh, and then add stuff. So you know, I could go back and add previous uh, documents as well and get a sense around that as, as well. So determining a fair valuation, the resources available, but do not offer a definitive valuation figure. Of course not. Uh, yeah, uh, sources offer, they're telling me how to do it, not what it is. Uh, increased operating profit, steady growth prospects, second half positively impact, plans to open 80 new store, 89 new stores, debt levels coming down, uh, significant assets management team is experienced, industry trends is constantly involving. We, we're not getting a heck of a lot in that regard. Uh, what were the lowlights in the results? Let's see if we can take that. Lowlights are particularly used because it's a weird sort of word. We could say red flags or uh, 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 you know, bad points or something. I'm interested if we can understand that sense of the language. Um, six months, yeah, cash generated decreased, uh, cash realization rate decreased, uh, signature brands revenue down, uh, retail revenue decreased, logistics flat. Okay, so this is uh, operating margins there. 
uh, wimpy UK revenue down a fair bit. So you're getting a you, what, what you, you're getting an overview, I suppose, is what we could say. I'm going to say what were the highlights of the results. I used when ChatGPT was still, I think, in version three or three and a half. I tried that, and it didn't. It, it was really pretty useless because it also remember it had only gone and scraped the web up till I think it was what uh, late 2021 at that point. Um, so here it comes with various different positive developments that are coming through. Uh, debt incre- uh, sorry, net debt de- decreasing. Uh, leading brands continue to p- perform well. Uh, sales up three uh, percent. Segment benefited from decreased energy support. Remember they had been helping their their franchisors in that regard. I like it. It it, it helps me get a high level. Does it get me to our you know to to a, to a, a strong valuation case? No. Um, compared to the spur results, and now it's going to say who's spur. Now uh, it, it's just because I haven't given it the spur result, so it's just not able uh, to spur. Yeah, see, it's, it's, uh, and not information about famous brands. So let's drop in a spur and let's see if. So I'm just going to go and give it the money web page on spur. Let's see how many of those links it will follow. Uh, website uh, link. Insert there. You will see it's also offering uh, different uh, uh, options, uh, questions it thinks you. How did the performance of famous brands leading in signature portfolios differ during the six months? So it's gone and analyzed, and it then says to you, hey, do you want some 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 uh, 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 sort of question ideas in a sense, I suppose, is what we are talking about. So t- giving you a nice overview of the two and looking at it. Let's try the spur again. How did famous brands' results compare to Spur? Uh, and uh, So let's see what it says about that. I've now dropped in the Spur, but I haven't brought in the particular pages. I basically just cheated and given it the MoneyWare page, which is, you know, it gives me charts. It, it, so it's got those links, and I don't know if they're going to go and dig in, how much detail they're going to take that. For example, the sensor here, so they could go and find the sense. Does it follow those links? Uh, there, does it say? Yep. Okay. Ah, so now, interestingly, we are getting some decentish analysis. Uh, we need spur revenue and operating profit for the same period to directly compare, so they can't. Uh, is to draw. Yeah. So they don't have that detailed breakdown. Uh, growth strategies to assess. Bloom, bloom, bloom. They can tell you market valuations. That's interesting. Uh, famous brands are a little bit more expensive, uh, and a so certainly famous brands more expensive and a lower dividend yield than Spur. And I'm going to try a last document here from Spur annual report to June 23. No, I don't want that. Let's see if uh, consolidated results. Let's add that to the equation and see if that in any way helps. You see, you can uh, Google Docs, slides, websites, YouTubes. You can just paste in text if you want at the same time. We are just putting uh, website links nice and simple. Now let's see if we get a better. So you can see it's still thinking. There, okay, it's got it. Uh, compare spur to uh, spur results to famous brands, and this is only going to get better, right? It, it, it yeah, I, I say to it, can you do a DCF? It can't, but it will be able to in time. I mean, at some point, yeah, and it's going to say, look, the DCF. What about this, that, and the rest? You've got to make some assumptions. Again, ah, now we're actually starting to get somewhere. Okay, okay, now we're getting some. So revenue, gross profits, operating margins, uh, earnings per share uh, coming through, PE ratios, market caps. Okay, this is actually looking a lot better. Uh, EPS and P, okay, operating margins, famous brands higher, slightly better operating margin compared to Spur, famous James, better cost control, operating efficiencies, uh, dividend yields, market capitalization. Segment performance uh, is unavailable in the res- in the sources. It's results, guys. I, I so it keeps on coming back with that. Uh, f- yeah, limited information there. Not the best, but hey, 
looking really good. And I got to say, moving very much in the right direction. I am, uh, I, I'm impressed. I, it, it is a lot better than when we were trying it uh, before. I like it. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Uh, and that will be true. We're going to leave it there. We'll be back again next week. My name is Simon. Uh, as always, look after yourself. If you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers all.